glory to God. We're not there wailing and begging. If only they'd known. I find Christians, they're trying to get victory. They think if they fast and pray and moan and groan, stupid, if only you knew. The enemy is terrified. He quakes. Why? Because Christ is alive in you. And they have no power. You have the creator of heaven and earth living within you. You have the whole of the Godhead within you. When you stand up, they quake. Said of Jesus, who gave you this authority? What they were saying is, we know you've got the authority. Who made you ruler? Who appointed you? They know you're appointed. Who made you? Oh, glory. isn't it wonderful? Huh? Well, isn't that wonderful? Yes. We're more than conquerors. Do you know, you don't just conquer, you annihilate. Glory to God. You know, you, we're on the earth to do something. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, it just is a much better... Thing, you know, and this is, this is an unbeliever saying all these things. A believing unbeliever. Do you know, the world believes more in God than the church. Isn't that terrible? The world believes, this woman, she believed more in the things of God and the children of Israel had watched all the miracles. Look, verse 11. As soon as we'd heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Now you'll notice that Joshua was told to be of good courage. You know, the real thing between a man of faith and a man of unbelief is the question of courage. It takes courage and it takes manhood to stand up for truth. That's why God hates the effeminate. Because there's people who have no courage. Courage is something that is eminently desirable you just got to be brave bold if you're going to do anything in the business world if you're going to do anything with your family anything you've got to have the courage of your convictions you don't apologize for them you know whom you believe you're fully persuaded what he promised he's able to perform And when your heart begins to fear, you need to read this. The devil's already petrified. He knows he's on a losing wicket. Not just a sticky wicket, it's a losing wicket. He's finished. Glory to... I love that. I love the thought that even the, the very people who are the greatest enemies, they know they've had it. Nothing you can do. Mm. Isn't that great? Well, isn't that great? You see, if you start taking courage, uh, and if only the children of Israel had known all these things, do you think they'd have wandered around 40 years in the wilderness? If they'd believe Caleb and Joshua they could have gone in 40 years of unbelief and terror because of one stupid thing and yet 
Every single person in the promised land knew that the children of Israel were coming and they knew they'd had it. And there wasn't one of them that was going to be able to stand up against them. And do you know there's not one disease, there's not one sickness, there's not one bondage, there's not one sin, there's not one devil, demon, gobbledygook can stand up against you. If only you'd known. If only you understood. Uh, and the only thing that stops you living in it is lack of courage. And no manhood in you. And so you live in poverty and failure because of your fear. That's terrible, isn't it? What a shout goes up. You know, there's a shout of victory. Hey. And God said to the children of Israel, he said, you go six days, walk around their battlements, have a look. Seventh day, seven times round. Look at just what they've put up and they think it's going to protect them. And then he said, on the seventh time, blow the horns, give a mighty shout, and the walls came tumbling down, didn't they? Huh? And all that looked so powerful just disintegrated with a shout. It would have disintegrated 40 years before. The hearts of the people in there had already disintegrated. They'd already quit. Hey, you know the devil has no power? 